All right, hello YouTube, this is Ryan and I'm the developer of AutoPad. And what I wanna to do today is walk you through actually using the AutoPad audio unit with other apps in kind of a realistic live setup in a host app called AUM. Now, I know a lot of people out there are using you know, MacBook Pros or laptops for running their keyboard rigs. But you know, with iPads getting more powerful, you know, I think they're becoming more of a viable option for the gigging musician, for keyboard players. And what I wanna to do today is just show you like a really simple setup in AUM that'll kinda of maybe get the ball rolling for you, let you see if you think this is something that you might be interested in checking out. I think the iOS space has, in the past couple of years, gotten a lot more well-developed uh, for music. There are some drawbacks to the iPads that you know I'll be discussing as I go, uh, but I just wanna show you what's possible and also kinda highlight how you can use AutoPad set list actions, or sorry, MIDI actions um, you know, to make your, your set just flow really nicely when you're using the iPad. So let's get started. I, I'll first describe what you see here. This is the app AUM, and AUM stands for Audio Unit Mixer. It is a really excellent iOS music app. It is for hosting other instruments, such as AutoPad. We'll look at some synths. We'll look at some keyboards today. You can bring those all together and use those in a really you know, powerful way in a live setting, much like you would in Ableton or main stage. Of course, the workflow is different, but I find that AUM is really great uh, for live use. So what I've done, you know, I have here, this is a iPad Pro 2018. So it's not M1 or anything, uh, but it's got a good amount of power. And what I've done is I have a, a USB adapter connected to it. And I've got my Scarlett interface connected and I've got a MIDI keyboard and I've got power connected. Now, one of the drawbacks of the iPads is that you only have the one port, which it is what it is, right? They even took away the headphone port. So that's a real drawback when it comes to doing you know, live audio on an iPad. But, you know, I encourage you to follow along and you'll see if maybe this is something you like. So I do have my, my adapter connected and I got my voice running in on channel one. I'll show you how to bring in some external audio as well. So on channel two, since I developed AutoPad, let's bring in AutoPad. I'll show you how to use it with some other instruments. So to add a channel in AUM app, you press the plus and you can select audio, MIDI, or import. And so what I did here is I selected an audio channel and I'm gonna load up AutoPad as an audio unit extension. And what that does is it loads up like a lightweight version of AutoPad inside of AUM. So let's do that, it's under audio symmetric and we can just tap on it and open up its window. It looks and behaves really similarly to the standalone app. So let's just play a pad here softly. All right, this is great, but we really want to use maybe another synth, a keyboard, something like that, because you know we don't want to just sit around and play pads all day. So what let's do is let's open up another app. We can just add another track. And this one, I'm gonna to go to audio unit extension and I'm gonna open this app, the house mark one. This is an app made by um, audio kit. And not only do they make great apps, but they also share their code with developers and AutoPad even uses some code uh, from the audio kit library. So a big shout out to the people that work on AutoPad or sorry, the people that work on AudioKit uh, because they just have made a bunch of really great apps and they're sharing what they've learned and it's really helped me a lot. So I'm gonna open the Housemark 1, which as you might guess is a really nice sounding Rhodes. 
And you'll see that we have this keyboard at the bottom, which we can hide and show in the lower left-hand corner. And I can just quickly uh, tap on those three bars, hit the keyboard icon, and just hear how it sounds. But I think what I'll do is I'll make it so my MIDI controller can uh, control the house mark one. So I tap on those three bars and I have this USB Uno MIDI interface. So I'm gonna check that and I'm gonna uncheck the keyboard, which is the on-screen keyboard. I'm actually gonna use that for AutoPad later. So let's see how that sounds. Yeah, it sounds really good. Uh, let's take a look at a, a synth app we could use in this setup. And for that, I'm gonna use this app. I'm gonna scroll down here uh, to this app called Cauldron by the developer Yonak. And this is a really cool analog modeling synth. And I'm gonna load up this sound uh, leads, or sorry, classic in the leads category. And it sounds great, but let's make sure we get our MIDI controller set up, which we do by tapping on the three bars. Bring that filter back up. So this is a really cool synth. I haven't explored it a ton, but I really like this classic sound. And it looks like it's got kind of a classic three oscillator setup. So you may be able to guess uh, what synth this is based on. And it honestly, it sounds really great so far. So we have an AutoPad, we have a keyboard, and we have a synth. It would be really nice to maybe route these things through some effects so we sound like we're in the same space and it's not all so dry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another audio channel. Let's get the AutoPad window out of here. And I'm gonna add a mix bus, and we're gonna call this Receive from Bus A. And what I'm gonna be able to do is basically route all my audio through this mix bus. And so I'm just gonna set that up, tapping on these pluses to add effects. Bus send, send to bus A, bus send, send to bus A. Now I actually, um, right now these are set up to be, I believe, well, let's actually see here. They're pre-fader, so I do want those to be post-fader uh, for a reason that will become apparent in just a little bit here. And so we have those routed, they're just sending, it's not, um, because we're gonna do a delay and a reverb here. So I'm gonna load up this delay called Modly, and I'm gonna load up a reverb, it's called Cleaver, which is also under Audio Unit Extensions. So you notice we have like the dry audio still coming through and I'll pull down this. But now we've got at least some send effects to this delay and reverb. Let's set the delay. Uh, Modly is a really fun kind of creative delay unit. I'm just gonna set it to dotted eighth. You can like put effects in here into the feedback loop, but I'm just gonna keep it simple. And Cleaver, it's a really nice sounding reverb. I'm gonna put it on this dark church setting and you can bring the wet way up. Yeah, really nice. Uh, those are by a developer Clevgrand, a Swedish developer, I believe. So I've got like a pretty simple setup here. I've got AutoPad, I've got House Mark 1, I've got a synth, and I've got just some nice effects going on. I can kind of rearrange things if I want by dragging up. And let's check out my MIDI routing. I've got uh, the House Mark 1, which is my USB keyboard coming in, and I've got the Cauldron synth controlled by that as well. You'll notice I just Pull this down, so right now I'm only hearing the house mark one. And let's pull up AutoPad, and uh, what let's do is let's make it so we can use the built-in keyboard to control that. 
because I want to show you the MIDI actions and specifically we'll do this in live mode. So if we open up the menu, we can go down here to this MIDI actions panel. Let's make this a little bigger. So what I actually have set up here is for the play pad action, I have MIDI note 60, which is C4, you see in the bottom center of my screen. I have MIDI note 48, which is gonna stop pads, and 49, it's gonna toggle click. So that would be you know, the C below, C4, and then the C sharp above it. And then I also have this select sound action, which I'm gonna show you how that works. And that starts with MIDI note 50, which is the D right next to the bottom of the screen. And I'm gonna be able to select any of the 10 factory sounds, or if I choose favorites, um, I'm gonna be able to have those selected from the favorites. I do have other videos where I show you how to use a setlist mode and the engine parameter actions. So you can check those out uh, if you want. But let's see how this works. So I've got note 60 is gonna play pad and I can get other keys by playing higher notes. And I've got stop pad, which is note 48. And I got toggle click and select sound. So let's just dismiss that and uh, let's just play a pad here. Just want to kind of turn that down. So C4 is the lowest note that plays a pad. I can play different notes using the higher notes. And let's change sounds. So what's going to happen is uh, you'll notice in the sounds bank, I don't have any uh, favorites selected. So I'm going to select sounds from factory bank. So if I press a D, I'm going to select the first sound, which is analog sign. And we hear that changing right after I press the D. And I can kind of press other notes above that to change sounds. And then note 48 is going to stop pads. So I can even like dismiss the window and I'll just like play a little bit. Uh, so let's start a pad. And we can play the keyboard. So if I wanna like bring in my synth, you know, I can just pull down this fader and bring this guy up. And now I've got my synth. Let's make that a little brighter. Oh yeah, that's nice. And let's pull, uh, bring in a pad. All right, so let's see. Yeah, let's play that synth that we had.
right, really nice. Uh, so let's, let me show you one more thing where I'll just bring in uh, some audio uh, from my from my base up here, my Moog base. So let's do that. I'll just add an audio channel. And this time, instead of saying audio unit extension, I'm going to select hardware input. And my Moog base is coming in on channel two. And let's just not get too loud here. Also, pretty easy to set up, sounds really great. So that should hopefully give you an overview of how to use AutoPad with other apps and instruments on iOS and maybe give you an idea of, hey, maybe this could work for me, maybe this is something I could try out if I'm in a pinch. You do need a USB adapter and your audio interface just like you do if you're using a laptop, uh, but you know, I find the touch interface to be really fun, and I do think now that these things, the iPads are becoming more powerful, we might start to see people using this more. So let me know if you're gonna try this out, if you're already doing this, and uh, really, you know, I'm looking forward to hear how people are using AutoPad, and hopefully this is inspiring. It certainly inspires me to see people all around the world using AutoPad, and uh, it just keeps me motivated, so thank you and have a good rest of your day.